Hello and welcome to PeeBuddy, Mr. D here, and welcome to part 3 of the Biomechanics for Beginners series. In the previous video, we went through the kinetic concepts. Today, we're going to look at the kinematic concepts. So these include human movement and projectile motion. So stick around, let's learn something. Okay, so kinematic concepts, they relate to objects in motion. So this can be something going through the air, or it can be a human body as well. And the key point here, this does not reference the forces that cause motion. This was covered in the kinetic concepts. All right, so let's dive into it. This section will cover distance, displacement, speed, velocity, and acceleration. First up, we have distance, which is the overall ground that was covered from the start of the motion to the end of the motion. So this has magnitude or quantity, but no direction. So we're gonna use this really useful image here to help us get our heads around this. So this point here is where we start, this point here is where we end. Okay, so the purple is the distance. So we're going up here, all the way up here, and then we finish down here. Let's say that's about 100 meters, all right? So the distance from here to here, taking the purple path, is 100 meters. A very similar concept is displacement, which is the difference in location from the beginning of the motion to the end, measuring in a straight line. That is key, measuring in a straight line. So displacement has both magnitude and direction. Okay, so again using this same graph, our start point is the same here and our end point is the same here. Okay, and even though we've followed the purple path, okay, our displacement is the green dotted line here because this is the start, this is the end, measuring in a straight line. So for example, if the purple path is 100 meters in distance, our displacement might be just 50. Additionally, because it has direction, we might say 50 meters southeast. Okay, moving on to speed now, which is the rate of change of distance. Okay, the equation here, speed equals distance divided by time. In biomechanics and physics, it's measured in meters per second. Whereas in real life, we may be more familiar with kilometers per hour or miles per hour, as this is something that we use in cars. It is a scalar quantity, similar to distance, which means it has no direction. And the example we can see Mr. Bean here, he might be riding at 10 meters per second. Another relevant concept is velocity, which is the rate of change of displacement. It's exactly the same formula as speed, except velocity equals displacement divided by time. Okay, it is measured in meters per second with a direction, and it is a scalar and vector quantity, which means it has magnitude and direction. Using this video here, we might say Mr. Bean is riding at 10 meters per second south east. Moving on to acceleration, which is the rate that the body changes its velocity. Okay, so acceleration is change in velocity divided by time, that is the formula. It is measured in meters per second per second. Okay, and it has magnitude and direction. So they're the concepts relating to human movement within the kinematic biomechanic sphere. Next, and finally, we're gonna move on to projectile motion. So this section will cover projectile motion, which is how objects, similar to this shot put, move through the air. We're gonna cover height of release, angle of release, and speed of release. So starting with the height of release. Very simply, the higher the level of release, the longer distance is achieved. Because, firstly, it is in the air for longer, and therefore the horizontal component acting on the projectile is longer. So you can imagine if this guy was on a 10 meter high diving platform and threw with the same force, the same angle, he'd still gain more distance simply because the height of release was higher. Next, we have the angle of release. Okay, this determines the time in the air and therefore the overall distance. Now, 45 degrees is optimal. This ensures the, the projectile, or the, the put here, follows what we call a parabolic flight path, which gives the maximum distance and the most efficient travel time through the air. So this is 45 degrees here, right in the middle. 
All right, so when this guy releases, it should be around 45 degrees. And it was. So he's going the maximum amount of distance due to his optimal angle of release. Finally, we have the speed of release. Very logically, speed of release determines the time in the air and overall distance. More speed equals more distance. This graph sums this up nicely. You can imagine that all of these different colored lines are different throws with different speeds of release. So they're all using the optimal 45 degree release height, okay? But the dark blue line here has a slow speed of release, say gaining 1.2 meters. And then the light blue or turquoise line goes the maximal amount of distance because it has the highest speed of release. So you've just learnt about human movement and projectile motion, which are the basic kinematic concepts. Thanks so much for watching today's video, guys. If you haven't watched the previous video, go back and have a look. It helps you understand the overall picture. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. If you've got any questions, add them in the question box and make sure you subscribe for our next video, which is on levers. Thanks everybody, bye.